you know the you know we, we talk about like uh, people say that there's a problem with bullies in uh, in public schools and you know where else do you see a problem with bullies and gangs is in prison <laughs> you know and and it's basically the uh, I think a natural result of uh, forced association between people who don't want to be together <laughs> you know and of course you're gonna get you know that kind of rebellion you know and uh, and internal strife you know I think it's it's only natural people that you know they, they're like well how are they gonna socialize i'm like well actually if you want them to be bullied you know send them to public school <laughs> that's the worst yeah. place worst place to be socialized my focus i think with my channel i mean i talk about a lot of stuff um you know volunteerism agorism anarchy uh, free markets austrian economics um precious metals monetary system <laughs> central banking federal reserve but i think i focus um a lot on peaceful parenting and unschooling and homeschooling, um, you know, primarily because I'm a I'm a father, uh, but right. also because I really think that that's um, that's one of the best ways that we can improve the world. You know, is being a model for our kids and uh, raising um, compassionate, kind, gentle, loving people. <laughs> you know, making the next generation um, more sensitive to um, you know aggression. And and not supporting an institution of violence, you know, very simple. <laughs> yeah, so I, I really feel that um, that peaceful parenting and unschooling, you know, and volunteerism and agorism and and all that are, are all related. Um, now, you know, I see that now, but I think a lot of people don't necessarily see that. Uh, um, but but I think I think it's definitely vital because um, you know we can talk to adults about uh, about these ideas and. Uh, and that's good, but but it's much more difficult to um, get them to see because they you know they've already been years and years of thinking a certain way, right? But uh, you know if you if you raise children in a different way, um, you know to not accept coercion in any fashion, right? It doesn't matter, you know what they call it. Doesn't matter what kind of um, status they have, what kind of badge they have, right? Um, then uh, I think we'll we'll see a very different world. Yeah, I mean, I, I mean, most people I think are good intentioned. Um, you know, they don't use, yeah. like I said in my video, they don't use violence um, to solve their problems, or they don't advocate other people use violence to solve their problems, or um, that a large group of people uh, use violence to solve their problems. But for some reason, when you um, uh, vote for somebody to do the very same thing, it's it's all of a sudden acceptable uh, and moral. And uh, and how does that how does that disconnect? you know, happen, you know, how does that, how do you, cr you know, cross that bridge and connect those things? Um, and it doesn't make sense. You know, the idea that you can't delegate a right you don't have. There's certain people that, um, or I guess most people did not come to this idea through uh, reason and evidence and logic. And so how can you use reason, evidence and logic to, to, you know, uh, change their mind or <laughs> show them a new way? In everyone's mind, there's like a man on top of an elephant, right? And the man is the um, is the logical, logical, rational side of the brain, and the elephant is the emotional, uh, you know, rep reptilian brain, uh, you know, limbic system type thing. And uh, and sometimes if the man wants to go left, but the elephant wants to go right, <laughs> what can the man really do? Not much to learn what is a cryptocurrency and why it's so important uh to you know defang the state uh, monopoly on currency right and right. Uh, and what what does that mean like what does that mean a monopoly on currency you know and and how detrimental is that to the people right and uh and how you know money used to be you know you know when you know cuz everybody only knows when you say money you know you, people think they mean um federal reserve notes or bank notes Right. But but historically, money was not necessarily that. Right. And it doesn't have to be that. That's the perversion of money. Money is just a transaction, you know, a tool for transacting, you know, um, moving value from A to B. And, uh, you know, so it's just a tool. You know, I tell people it's just a tool like a like a computer, like a screwdriver, like a car uh, that uh, improves our lives. And so, you know, the tool can never be immoral. But, um, you know, what people use the tool for, of course, can be or the the right. intent that the person has using the tool can be immoral. Talking about subjective value. Um, you're right. Nothing has inherent value. You're right. Value is given by the people who use it. Right. And the amount of people that use it, the value of things is in how many people use it. Right. So he was saying that before, like uh, when VHS came out, there was some other company that was competing with VHS. And the only reason that 
you know, VHS got big was because I guess it was advertised, but maybe better marketing scheme. You know, people loved it. And, and it's not necessarily that the thing is actually useful. It's that people believe that it will be useful because yeah. the reputation of something is so powerful. Like if somebody were to, you know, make a post or an article saying how horrible VHS is, don't, don't buy it, don't invest your money. And then millions of people believe them and then millions of people abandon VH. it's going to de- it's going to destroy the, the field so it's it's a really big confidence game just just the idea of value you know and people like to think gold and silver have value and no they don't have intrinsic value i mean you know they can be used for jewelry and different things like that you know the value is in people wanting to use it it's like people use it and then more people want it and then more people want it <laughs> wealth is never destroyed it is merely transferred right so so wealth is something that's built up accumulated over time through you know people creating different things to improve the lives of those around them and and how that can never really be destroyed like for example during the great depression right why was there so much suffering during the great depression like did the factories disappear did the cars disappear did the you know people's clothes disappear no all that disappeared was the money right so how is it that so many people were suffering if just the money disappeared (laughs) but not the actual things the items right so the wealth didn't disappear it was being transferred right mm. to to really to the ruling class basically every time right, there's, there's right. a monetary crisis uh and there's inflation and hyperinflation and then and then they have to change the currency usually wealth is transferred a large portion of wealth from the people who are saving it usually the middle, middle class to those people uh who are well connected with the state you know central bankers things like that oh, yeah. politicians yeah and so and so one way to to hedge against that or to um store your wealth is in uh items that that don't rely on um you know third party uh for their value like like uh, the federal reserve note right the, the, right. You know, re- requires the federal reserve um for its value and and again they can't print it like they can just print you know um to oblivion <laughs> the federal reserve note i was telling uh you know i was explaining to some of my friends recently um about about you know the monetary system and and why printing money doesn't make people wealthier richer right because if it did just imagine if everybody's if everybody's bank account like they just added a zero to everybody's bank account does that mean everybody's going to be wealthier like we're all richer (laughs) right? or if everybody got a million dollars right now does that mean we're all millionaires you know living the living the life if a cup of coffee costs hundred thousand dollars then you didn't gain much (laughs) you know when i talk about anarchism it's it's not you know people get confused in the in the tangential um you know rabbit holes of like how would we feed the poor how would we you know uh, educate how would we build the roads how would we protect uh the weak and feed the hungry how would we do all this stuff right and to me it's not necessarily about that that's not the focus um to me it's just about starting with yourself and living a moral decent life and then emulating your that for your kids so that your kids can become like that and so you you just live the way that you want the world to live right you be the example and uh you know it's it's not even about all this questions those are irrelevant those are like those are you know fictitious like you know we can we can go along these um hypothetical scenarios all we want um but it it's really meaningless right because <laughs> You know, it really doesn't mean anything. It's 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 fun and all and all that, but it's really meaningless. Like to me, it's more about yeah, yeah. how do you live your day to day life. Are you a decent person? Do you treat people with respect? You know, or do you violate people's consent? Right. That's really what it comes down <laughs> to. That's what anarchy is to me. So, so I think people get too caught up in the uh, in the details, and I'm like, no, ground yourself and start with yourself, and that's it.